and we were ah. able to tell to tell whether uh, um, an office is well illuminated or when in the evenings when the dark starts uh, creeping in uh -huh. uh, to kind of improve the illumination so wow to the level that we were able basically to tell when there is a high uh, a high probability of flu virus so the problem with smart locks is that they actually work okay ish mm -hmm. if you are in control of the lock if you are a single home owner you are there and you like to fiddle with novelties mm -hmm. when you want to deploy this on a larger scale this becomes a problem it can be the intercom as we've said if someone wants that that's great but it's also the case that if you don't need that part of the puzzle you don't have to have it you can actually discreetly have it installed elsewhere is that correct yes yep. that's correct i mean we 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 are a startup so we did not build like five different versions of the same product we yeah. have the same product but that, that is smart and can do a lot of things like i said like three thousand years ago mm -hmm. nothing changed since then in terms yeah. of and now we are on a, on in in a situation where we actually have a very tangible change mm -hmm. how we think about protecting property how we think about accessing property and on the other side of that is that there are just a lot of doors out there. Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and we've got another fantastic guest for you today which you're going to meet shortly. And it involves one of my favourite subjects, PropTech. As we know, on This Week in Property, we love the world of property, but I must confess, I do love the world of tech as well. And whenever we can get the chance to combine those two worlds together and solve problems through that, then that's something that definitely makes me excited. And we have such a superstar here. Oh yes, we have Alish Spetic from Clavio. Now Clavio, you're going to hear about shortly, which is a fascinating thing. Uh, but let's see the man behind it all, the CEO, the co-founder of the whole thing. Alesh, first of all, hello, welcome, thank you for coming on the show. Hi, thank you for having me. It's really great to have you because uh, the viewers don't know yet what we're about to talk about, but I've been digging around on the, the website, some of the, the fantastic little videos that explains all of the benefits of it. That's that's what we're going to chat about. But first of all, the man, the man himself, the CEO, how on earth did he get to this position? We're going to talk about Clevio and everything in the present world and the future plans. But how did you get to this point? What's your story? What's your kind of background? And you're a bit of a serial entrepreneur by accounts, aren't you? Uh, yeah, this is actually my fourth startup. Um, <laughs> so I became a CEO by stopping being a CEO at my previous startup. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have, a, I have a technical background. Then I went into a bit more uh, business waters. But about 12, 13 years ago, I started my first startup here in London which did a bunch of software with big data. We moved it to the States. Then I created a second starter, which was kind of spectacular failure, which I think it, <laughs> it, it goes into the whole portfolio of, of a proper serial entrepreneur. Yes. Then my third startup, which was uh, a bit more interesting for today's story because it was called Cube Sensors. And we mm -hmm. connected a lot of sensors around uh, within a building to understand better uh, how the environment influences people. And we were ah. able to tell, to tell whether uh, um, an office is well illuminated or when in the evenings where the dark starts uh, creeping in uh -huh. uh, to kind of improve the illumination. So wow. to the level that we were able basically to tell when there is a high... Uh, a high probability of flu virus. Uh, ah, really? My goodness. Yeah, it, it, because it, yeah, viruses survive in a different environment, and if mm -hmm. you address that, it's, it, it just makes it better. That's but more importantly, is. through that, I got to, to know uh, people in a business called One Fine Stay, which mm -hmm. was a property management business, short let management business, where they manage about two, three thousand properties around. London and other major cities. Mm -hmm. And because they were managing those properties, they had a big problem of how to get keys to the right person who needs to get to that property. Mm. They basically have two options. Either you build a St. Peter keychain with a lot of keys around and somebody running around, <laughs> or 
you uh, try to be somehow smart about it. Um, mm. So with, with, with them, we talked about for a long time and we realized that uh, me and my team have technical knowledge about how to do that. They have the domain knowledge. So what we actually need in order to manage a lot of properties. Mm. So we teamed together and that became Clevio, which now has been running for about three years and we provide solutions to open doors with the phone. That is tremendous, absolutely tremendous. And tell me, I mean, I, I think I know the answer to this, the way you're describing yourself, that career path, etc. When you came across the problem that they had and your smart brain went, bing, I know an answer to that. Is that something that you just cannot walk away from? Could you, could you not dismiss that and say, I'll let someone else deal with that? Did, did, once you've got that idea, that bug, do you have to solve it? You can see you smiling. <laughs> well, the problem is that the, I'm, I'm kind of probably a flea back of those sort of problems. <laughs> uh, because the thing is that, I mean, you can see when you, when you understand certain technology or certain ways how to solve a problem, mm -hmm. you, you always see a problem that would fit your hammer, right? Right, right. Um, so the challenge really is how to put on hold the ones that are, uh, let's say, the less opportunistic and pick the right one. Gotcha, gotcha. To make, to make sure it's actually a nail for your hammer. And you're, you're, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. And the second thing that I always try to do is uh, whether I can justify it rationally. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not believe that solve in, in, into an approach which in, 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 in all truth, a lot of people are promoting that they are building solutions for themselves. Mm. I'm just not cocky enough to say that I am the representative demographics of half of the world because I'm not. Right. i much rather go into those problems and calling them a hobby yeah. because it satisfied me, but where something rational as the access problem is, mm -hmm. then, okay, this might become a business. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. Makes sense. Good stuff. So for Clevio itself, let's dig into this because this is fascinating stuff. Smart locks, you know, people will say, oh yeah, smart locks, yeah, yeah, they, they're around, they're everywhere, there's lots of them. Yeah, that's correct, but they've got drawbacks. And Clevio dismisses those drawbacks. You have worked out a way to get around a lot of those things. So where is it that you see the kind of common failings or weaknesses of what someone would class as smart locks? And then how is it you went about getting around them? Well, smart locks, obviously, let's maybe step, take a one step back and right. just talk maybe about the problem itself. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the why do we have locks and keys is because mm -hmm. we try to protect our property. Yep. And throughout the history of humankind, up to three or four thousand years ago, if you wanted to protect your property, you needed a guard or a pond with a crocodile in the inside. <laughs> um, and then about three thousand years ago, a technical solution came about, which is called a key and a lock. Mm -hmm. First it was wooden, then it was uh, iron and so forth and so forth but uh, in effect it was a way how to te technically secure a property mm -hmm. now and this technology hasn't really changed in about 3,000 years there is always a mechanical lock and there is a key that turns something around yeah uh, now about 10 years or 15 years ago this came about so yes. a smartphone the right? phone yep Yep. And the fact of the matter is that with my phone, I can now authenticate myself every single time. I need to put my finger to it mm -hmm. to say, yes, this is really Alej doing. Mm -hmm. I can, with the phone, I can tell that, the, that, the, uh, that I'm really in front of the door. Mm -hmm. I can prevent from somebody else copying whatever is on my phone mm -hmm. because the digital, digital technology can guarantee uniqueness so yeah. copying of those keys which now you can do in every shop down down the street is all, if there are keys on the phone is impossible yeah. so this was the opportunity we, we started to talking about uh so how to make the the all the problems that physical keys have go away and mm -hmm. we thought that the solution for that was making it digital mm -hmm. now in order to make a key digital that's one 
flip one side of the coin. The other side is actually the actuator, so the mechanical bit that unlocks the doors. Mm -hmm. So a lock. And here is back to your question. So a smart lock. Yeah. In most cases, the smart locks are just an evolution of the existing locks. And what they do, they take the torque, which you usually produce with your hand, mm -hmm. and put it into the motor so that a little motor does the bzzz and opens up the, the, the lock. Now, this has a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. One, this battery, this, this uh, uh, motor needs to be powered with a battery which is a huge problem uh, because the battery ran out of juice. Yeah. Now, if you took the uh, remote control for a TV, you never preemptively uh, change the batteries. You change them when you run out of batteries. <laughs> True. Right? So what do you do on your lock? Yes, of course, you get the notifications, but you always dismiss it. So this yeah. is one huge problem. Another problem when you, do the, when you rely on the machine to produce a torque, is unless you, you produce extremely strong forces, you have an issue every single time when the door bends a bit or when it stretches a bit during like changing of the seasons, humidity, temperature, whatever. Uh, of course. Yeah. And with if you are a human being in front of the doors, you give it a little a little nudge. Mm -hmm. There is no such technical term as for the electrical motor, say, give it a little nudge, right? <laughs> you just need to produce more, more torque. So the problem with smart locks is that they actually work okay-ish mm -hmm. if you are in control of the lock, if you are a single home owner, you are there and you like to fiddle with novelties. Mm -hmm. When you want to deploy this on a larger scale, this becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. So actually, the only doors that we know of that works well with smart locks are actually hotel doors for two uh -huh. reasons. One, because they are standardized, they're all indoors. And two, most importantly, they have a scheduled maintenance crew that makes sure, mm -hmm. going around the clock, uh, that the doors work, the batteries are changed. And three, because you have always a reception. If something's wrong, somebody else can help you. Yeah. Now, so how do we deal with that? So what we said, okay, fine, but people have been opening doors without keys for four decades now with fog or, or magnetic cards. Mm -hmm. So the mechanical bit of opening those doors has been solved. It's called an electric strike. So it's the bit on the, on, on the door frame that releases uh, when so it doesn't pro provide a torque, it just little little releases and the doors can be pushed out. Yeah. So we said, okay, fine. Can we take this digital bit of uh, managing keys and put it into the existing mechanical solution called a strike? Mm -hmm. And this is what Clavio does. So Clavio, in effect, has uh, is is a smart, if you can call it, intercom. So mm -hmm. a headset that you usually have in your apartment or a buzzer that you press the button does the buzz and opens up the downstairs door. Mm -hmm. We do exactly that. So we, we enable an existing hardware solution to become smart. So yeah, have, that, that, yeah, that's really important, eh, Alesh. It really is because I, I couldn't believe it when I was when I was watching it. The the people listening just now, if you're that landlord or property manager or you've got an Airbnb or there's countless other uses for it, and you're thinking, that sounds great so far, but wait a minute, I've got 50, 100, 150, I need to change all of my locks, I'll need to get joiners in, I'll get... That's not the case with Clevio, isn't it not? They don't need to change their existing locks. Exactly. Yeah. So, the, so the, the, the consequences of our approach uh, provided all of, the, all of the competitive advantages we have against any other lock. Yeah. So one, we can control multiple doors because we do not, we do not change anything on the doors. If you, yeah. are, uh, if you have a property or an apartment on the fifth floor and you have a downstairs communal door, that wire to mm -hmm. the downstairs doors already exist. Yeah. So we basically connect to that wire and we allow you to press the button as you would in your apartment. We allow you to do it on your phone and you can even do that remotely. It's fantastic. It really the is. The second thing, yeah, yep. sorry. Yeah, no, carry on, carry on. 
The second thing is that we are, because we do that, we are a retrofit. Mm -hmm. So we allow people to use existing keys exi for existing locks still. Yeah. Uh, but for those cases, when you want to use a smart access solution, you can use it. Yeah. So in my own home, I have an 18 year old daughter, 17 year old daughter, she'll be 18. Mm -hmm. She never loses her iPhone. She always <laughs> lost her, fee, her, her keys. <laughs> The mystery, but that's how it is. Yes, I've got three daughters the same. I know exactly what you mean. Yep. Now she let herself home only with 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 her phone. On yeah. the other hand, my parents, who are over seventy five, yep. they wouldn't care about smartphone. They can no. still use their key, and I'm fine with that. Yes, that's right. That's, that's, that's a great point. Yeah, the, the two different demographics, the different markets and so on and so forth. It really is. I'm sure there's a lot of light bulbs going off with uh, the viewers who are watching just now. What you really need to do, your, uh, viewers, sorry, after you've listened to this wee chat with uh, myself and Alesh, is get onto the show notes, use the link and check out the site because as I explained earlier, on the website for Clevo, they've got a fantastic little demonstration video and it shows you a lot of the uses of it, a lot of the great challenges it gets around. You'll see people with, you know, Airbnbs, for example, and you're thinking to yourself, how can I possibly keep turning up and getting people in? And how can I mop up after that? How can I let my cleaners in? And if there's something wrong, how can I let my, you know, my joiner in and so on and so forth? Forget all those headaches. Forget everything about, you know, 5,000 keys and the joiner left it in the van and the cleaners not brought it from the last property. They all disappear. It's really fantastic. You're sitting wherever you are with your phone, with the app, and uh, you're pressing buttons. You know, you're getting maybe a message through from the people at the door and you can allow that access. It's fantastic. And then I suppose the, the people there were always looking for the negative. We're always chasing that. Ah, but what if? But what if? What if my phone dies? What if that happens, Alesh? How, how do I go about that? Well, that's the beauty of our approach. So yeah. if, if, if we need to go slightly more technical, so in most cases, when you take a smart lock, you have your phone app mm -hmm. and you have a smart lock. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So if your mm -hmm. app uh, phone dies, that's about it. Yeah. What we do, we, we have a, because we started off building a system for a lot of properties. Mm -hmm. So for somebody who has five, 10, even 500 uh, units, we're short letting them or whatever. Yeah. We had to store the keys in the cloud, which means that your phone is just one access point. You mm -hmm. can always borrow the phone from somebody else, log in your credential as you would in your Gmail account, mm -hmm. and you have access to your unlocking uh, options there. Mm -hmm. Perfect, perfect. And for the, let's say the scenario of a tenant. So I've got a tenant now, one tenant's moved out, next tenant's coming in. Is it the case, am I right in thinking, I can close off the access for that last tenant, you know, keeping the place secure, obviously. And then the new tenant, do, do I set them up with the app on their phone as well? Can, can we work that way? Well, we are even, we. we it goes even further than that because the, right. the, the keys are digital. Yep. We can time limit them. So in case of a short led business, mm -hmm. uh, you can just issue them the keys that are valid from Thursday to Friday midnight. Yeah. It's fantastic. Keys die. Yeah. Um, the, on, on the second question is what do you do with your new guest or, or a new tenant? Mm -hmm. We, if there is a, an, a, a if, if there is a need for a longer term, for a few days use, in that mm -hmm. case, we, uh, we obviously suggest to download the app. Yeah. And then you, they get all the keys. They can share those keys or whatever they can do with, with, with them. Yeah. Very but we, are also, uh, we will launch it soon, actually. We, we are testing a version where you could send a temporary keys that is valid, valid only for a very short time, ah, link. That's right. particularly for just delivering something, coming in for just one-off solution, and they don't want to go through the hassle of downloading the whole app. Just yes. To have one, one, one use case. So no. we have that as well. 
That's, that's yeah, that's a fantastic point. And again, it's, it's a little uh, snapshot inside the video as well. All of these different scenarios are covered. It's, it's really fantastic. There's a lady on the video explaining, you know, I no longer miss any deliveries and ourselves, especially if we're, if we're busy business owners, we're busy investors, we're, we don't have time for these small details in life. So the more that we can get rid of them, the more that those decisions can be taken away, then the more we can focus on the bigger things, the bigger picture. And, and things like, yes, deliveries are important, to, to our homes, to our business, it might be in a communal area or we've got some kind of uh, collection point set up, just one quick button on your phone and that's dealt with. There's no, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to chase this guy, I'm going to have to make another appointment, I'm going to have to go to a depot to pick this up, all disappears. It's really tremendous, and especially people with a lot of the turnarounds. Um, and what you touched upon there, you know, it could be a short thing like a delivery, it could be one of our trades, you know, maybe we've had to get the, the plumber in to fix something just before the next tenant comes in, for example. A little short link with a, with a temporary access is going to be perfect for that. It really is. Well, we had a colleague here. Um, she used to have, <clears throat> sorry, she used to have a, a regular de delivery of flowers ah. to, to her home. Mm -hmm. Very soon she realized that because there's always this, the, the, a, the same delivery guy delivering it. Mm. Um, she literally set, set it up with Clevio. She trusted the guy. The guy came in once or every two weeks or something like that. Put the mm. flowers into the uh, on into the pot on the table. Uh, said goodbye and went out. Yeah. Um, and on the other hand, in most cases, what we do suggest with the deliveries, particularly if you do not know the delivery person. Mm -hmm. um, you can still let them in or they can let them, uh, themselves in at least to the communal area mm -hmm. that is that is way more that is less intrusive than just letting them in into your apartment yeah. but it beats the hell out of having to deliver everything to your office and then schlep it through the tubes back home Exactly, exactly. No, definitely. Now, let's dig a wee bit deeper into the weeds here and make sure we tick off all the things for people thinking, I wonder if it does this, I wonder if it does that. You have touched upon it already. I just want to emphasise this to people so they didn't miss it. Yes, you will be able to uh, uh, enable the access into the apartment, the flat, whatever. But yes, uh, Alice, you've already touched upon this. It also can cover the communal access. So if, the, if they never missed up now, it's already wired through. So when the Clavio box is added inside, then it's a simple case of that wire being installed, isn't it? So you've got access to both communal and the, the private place. Yeah. Which is exactly. Fantastic. And, and we are, in fact, the only solution in the market who can do that currently. Yes, exactly. Um, and uh, another point which is also important is that even though you can find some of the products that would allow you to hack that by yourself, mm -hmm. we found out that uh, this is just not the right way to do it. I mean, you need to have a professional installation, so we provide a full service uh, with installation if you want uh, your, your property be accessible through digital keys. We, we provide a full installation, the product, and then on all the service on top. Yes, perfect. Now, I'm going to pull on that wee tangent there, so that's a great thing. So, at the moment, with, with where you are, with scaling up and so on and so forth, you can do that full package with installation through the whole of the Greater London area. Yeah, that's correct. But if someone's listening in, oh, that's a shame, I'm, I'm in Sunderland or I'm up in Scotland or whatever, they can still work with you, they can speak with you and get in touch with your team to be able to possibly purchase the, you know, the software, the kit, the hardware, etc., and then have you know, someone else deal with the installation or they do it themselves. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, we are. In, in fact, we now have a network of installers uh, nationwide. Nationwide, is it? Ah, fantastic. Great we, stuff. We do not cover all of the areas yet. Most of the, uh, m most of the metropolitan areas we do. Mm -hmm. And we, we basically provide a mixture of either our own installers or third-party installers that we've trained mm -hmm. uh, to provide that service. So, yeah, we have installations in Edinburgh and... Dublin and other sort of cities already, yeah. but we did start it off in, in, in London. Yes, yes, which is appropriate. Yeah, that's great. So make sure you get in touch if you want to have a, have a wee chat about that. So I'm going to take a wee couple of steps forward as well with the box, the Clevio box inside. It can be the intercom, as we've said, if someone wants that, that's great. But it's also the case that if you don't need that part of the puzzle, you don't have to have it. You can actually discreetly have it installed elsewhere. Is that correct? 
Yes, yeah. that's correct. I mean, we, 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 we are a startup, so we did not build like five different versions of the same product. We yeah. have the same product, but that, that is smart and can do a lot of things. So mm -hmm. it can be a replacement for the intercom headset, mm -hmm. or it can be just the door enabler. In yeah. fact, some of our customers who require it, uh, particularly building managers who require it just for the communal door, we actually install it into the electrical cupboard of the building. So it's ah, of course, yeah, it's a uh, great idea. It's private customers who just want to have it in their own apartment, mm -hmm. uh, we put it in, in their own apartment. But the interesting bit is because you connect it to the existing wire, mm -hmm. you do not to, to kind of change the intercom system of the whole building. You literally mm -hmm. replace the headset as you would go to the any sort of tech shop and get a new headset and put it on. The yeah. difference is that our is smart and it can be connected to your phone. Yeah, fantastic. Now, some of the tech-savvy ones might have spotted a potential flaw. They're thinking, wait a minute, the cloud, okay, security is covered. We, we've talked about that. It's bank-level security. That's fine. There's a mobile phone involved. Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. What about connectivity here? But they've got a couple of options, haven't they, when it comes to, you know, whether it's Wi-Fi, etc. Do you want to explain that? Yes. Uh, all of our devices basically can talk through three channels. Mm -hmm. One is the near field one, so Bluetooth. Mm -hmm. The second one is Wi-Fi. And the third one uh, is directly to a SIM card. So our devices are equipped with, with, with the SIM card and they are programmed in the way that they can switch to whichever channel is better at the time. Mm -hmm. So if Wi-Fi goes down, you, it can talk through the SIM, uh, through the cell network, uh, if the cell network is down, it has the, the, the backup of, of the Wi-Fi. So in that respect, we are the most reliable solution of that sort because we mm. just wanted to, to make it as resilient as possible. So any sort of channel that's available, we, 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 we only cover. Yeah, fantastic. It's really amazing. I'm sure people are listening in thinking, my goodness, they've thought of everything. This is crazy. Uh, and they have. It's just incredible. So make sure you do what I've said. Get into the show notes. Use the link. Definitely watch the little short video because that will blow your mind. And the amount of different scenarios that it can cover for you is fantastic. And, you know, get listen, connect with Alesh as well. You know, reach out to him on LinkedIn. Make sure you follow him because the way that this man's going, no doubt there'll be yet another startup coming down the pipe. It's just ridiculous. He's on fire. Uh, but for Clevio, what's the future? What do you see ahead? Is there a, you spoke about some of the testing of some other features. That's great. Any other plans and targets that you have in mind? Well, we are already installing the first few hundred units in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, we've installed quite a few in Barcelona already, so we are expanding around. Brilliant. But the future in the access system is like, like I said, like 3,000 years ago, mm -hmm. nothing changed since then in terms yeah. of, and now we are on a, on in, in a situation where we actually have a very tangible change, mm -hmm. how we think about protecting property, how we think about accessing property. And on the other side of that is that there are just a lot of doors out there. <laughs> There's a, a lot of doors. It's a huge market. It and really is. However you want to put it sooner or later, I'm not saying that we're going to replace all the keys, uh, not, not at all, but at least a, a significant portion of that sooner or later will get slowly transitions towards the smartphone and the opportunity is just huge. So we would yeah. like to, to be able to, uh, to offer or enable digital access to anybody who needs to kind of lock the door. Yeah, as you say, the doors are everywhere. It's so true. Locks are everywhere. We've touched upon quite a lot of the, the kind of residential market, if you might say, you know, short lets, long lets, etc. But the business, the corporates, they're involved as well. They've got doors, they've got locks, they've got staff. So all of those hassles that everyone knows about in business, oh, I need to cut another key, or there's a new employee, or that employee left, so on and so forth. Clevio can step in and take all those headaches away as well. Yes. Yeah, it's fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Well, I want to be really respectful of this man's time. He's got a busy brain with some busy businesses all over the place. Uh, for today, Alesh Spetic, I love that name, love it, from Clevio. Thanks a million for your time, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you for having me. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I did. Remember, with the guests that you just saw, go into the show notes for the page because all of their links are there so that you can get in touch and to get more information. And talking about getting more information, more guests, more insights, more knowledge, etc., make sure you're subscribed. Get the subscription done, get the notifications on, and then we'll always keep in touch with you every single time a brand new show is going to come out. So thanks for tuning to This Week in Property.